All right, YouTube looks good and sounds good. So welcome everyone to the Foolish Tech Show. It is a Friday afternoon, so the end of the week. Woohoo! Um, we are here mainly to provide uh, support and answer any questions for our products and services. If you'd like to ask any of those questions, uh, jump over to our IRC chat at foolishtechshow.com or foolishit.com slash live. And you can join our IRC chat in a few different ways there. And we'll be happy to have you. Um, otherwise, we're going to fill the air with random tech chatter news and just stuff in general. So uh, feel free to interrupt us anytime or jump in the chat and direct our conversation as it goes. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Looks like Phoenix is throwing a bunch of links in there. We got Rover Desk in there as well. Welcome. Um, how's everybody doing this Friday evening? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, the more, uh, I look into this, I was a little bit upset about a news story I came across about, um, robocalls because I hate robocalls. Doesn't everybody hate robocalls? Yeah, sure. Everyone hates robocalls. It's a given. Um, but particularly the political variety, um, you know, I, I certainly don't want some party, you know, tied on my phone line or anything else. And there's a lot of arguments you can make privacy amongst other among many others uh, related that, that you could go against that. But a judge recently um, ruled uh, that it's free speech, but you got to look at the details of this. Uh, this is again one of the cases where um, you got to look at it to, to it. They were, they were um, sectioning out a very specific type, the political oriented robocalls. And because they classified a specific type of speech, it is a restriction of free speech. And then, um, you know, it's, it, you know, they, they, they maybe should have argued in, in a different um, manner or presented it to ban all robocalling, not just, you know, but um, let me uh, give you a few few links on that for you guys to uh, peruse. But otherwise, it's been um, an okay week. Um, okay. <laughs> Maybe there's another link to this. Uh, well, I thought this was interesting that... Uh, Forget the small talk. <laughs> Bluetooth is finally outsold wired headphones mm. just in time for phones to stop carrying headphone jacks. So, uh, excuse me, how are they? Bluetooth has finally outsold what, 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 what specific statistics? I don't, uh, so more Bluetooth headphones are being sold than wired headphones. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, that I mean, I mean that makes sense. Anybody by new would would want uh, new technology, but that doesn't mean that there are more Bluetooth uh, headsets out there. Um, you know, that's not what it said. So. Yeah. 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 But uh, but but okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I read more. Hey, futures tech, Eric. Um, this one was also pretty interesting. Uh, it's got a video, but just the the GIF is enough, I think. But uh, watching a toothbrush melt, incredibly satisfying. Uh, uh, be the judge, but hey, it's pretty cool. Rover uh, says he'll stick with wired ones. Um, yeah, I'm actually uh, uh, somewhat of a fan of uh, really nice wired ones, but <sighs> having the flexibility to walk around my house uh, is 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 hugely awesome. I like Bluetooth headphones. I have a pair that I've had for five years, and it's been great. I got another pair that is pretty good. Um, they're a little bit tight on my head, but um, Certainly if you're they, with they the still come with wired connections that you can hook them up with wire. They don't even have to have power at that point, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I, I, I would want the, the maybe the flexibility for certain situations, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what most most all Bluetooth headphones I've seen come with that. So, mm -hmm. um, here's another cool link. I thought uh, watch a guy build a longbow out of a tree, so you get to watch him chop down the tree and all. 
Yeah, I mean, that's how they used to do it. So, uh, that can actually be pretty uh, interesting if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting video, actually. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, same here, uh, Eric. Uh, most act Actually, most of the time, I'll use my Bluetooth headphones for everything except where I want to be sure that I have a crystal clear connection and it stays solid. So, like, if I'm joining the show, usually I'll have a pair of wired headphones or I'll use the wire with my Bluetooth headphones. Um, but I, I like Bluetooth. It works really well for most all cases. Um, I thought this link was pretty interesting as well. They came up with a new uh, solar energy to turn CO2 into uh, hydrofuel or what's it called? Uh, hydro something. Oh, is Glenn with us? Wait, is Glenn with us? He's got to be with us, right? Glenn's with us now? Yeah. There he is? Okay. Your carbon fuel. Um, listen, uh, uh, okay, so Australia has moved 1.5 meters. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I guess, um, cars don't GPS like that. Is, 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 is an issue because of that. Yeah. Um, hmm. Um, so, wow, why did it move so much? And Well, they're called tectonic plates, and the Earth is made up of them. They're no, constantly... no, 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 but I mean, this didn't just move 1.5 meters in the, like, the last day or week. I mean, you know, it, it, this, this took some time to occur. Uh, a country moves about 7 centimeters, 2.75 inches per year. Okay, that makes sense. It does what? It moves uh, about seven centimeters or 2.75 inches per year. Yes, because of, drift, it's a wonderful thing. Because of? Yeah, tectonic plates. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I, you know where, where you're going with that. There's nowhere to go. You should just believe me. Anyway, my link was way. No, I was just saying that the the, the one point five into fuel with just light. That's freaking awesome. That's way better than uh, solar panels, even. As <laughs> Michael looks upon disapprovingly. Um, uh, solar panels. No, solar panels is great. But where's your link? Am I not seeing? Did, did you post a link? No. I post a Gizmodo. Oh, there, there it is. Okay, sorry. sorry. Um, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna look at some of Phoenix's link. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the uh, oh, that's one thing I've been shit. Uh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, the Windows 10 upgrade uh, ending today. Um, so get your last. Uh, Yay, okay, so... Yep, Windows 10 won't be available after tomorrow. Oh, that's funny. So Brazil froze 11.7 million of Facebook's funds for not complying with the court orders to decrypt WhatsApp, I believe. Yeah. Yep, Sony was sued for not protecting a leaked movie from pirates. And of course, movie studios want to take down Kick-Ass Torrent's mirror. Oh, PowerShell becomes open source. That's interesting. And the exact cutoff time for Windows 10 is midnight tonight. Uh, is that mm -hmm. Eastern or Pacific? Uh, Eastern, I think. It's I don't weird because Redmond's usually. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that question is actually. Okay. I'm gonna try to find the look at the timer. Mm, let's 
see what else. That's all we got. Yeah, we already know Clinton was breach. Blah blah blah. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting. They took some images of Mars and overlaid some color analysis on it to try to figure out uh, where these trenches and things came from. Um, apparently, it was not from flowing water because apparently they just found out recently that water boils on the surface of Mars. Did y'all know that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the pressure, atmospheric pressure, yeah. So it's unlikely that uh, the trenches in Mars were made by uh, flowing water on the surface. Um, there... Uh, um. Yeah. Why did they? Um. Why did it take so long for them to figure that out? Well, so what is the explanation for for it? Uh, they think it's because of uh, carbon monoxide freezing and then melting and then freezing and melting over and over and over again over millions of years. Carbon. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Hmm. 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 <laughs> That's what they think. They're not sure. They don't know why exactly. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool list. Uh, all 56 uh, Stephen King movies and TV shows ranked. And number one was... What do y'all think? What do you think number one was? Don't look. Don't cheat. Stephen King, you say? Yep. Uh, the Yo. number one the stand. What, what did you say? I'm guessing Shawshank. Oh, oh, Shawshank. Yeah, not the, uh, the stand. Um, Shawshank. Um, one I of think those two. That's the best. One of those two. Personally. Nope. The Shining. Really? The Shining was the best? Score! Okay. Shining point. and then Carrie came in second. I can't believe y'all didn't think. Really? Okay. Uh, no, the original Shining with Jack Nicholson wasn't really didn't go by the book very much. We'll say that Stephen King didn't even like it, but being a Kubrick film, it is one of the greatest films ever made. So it does beat out every other Stephen. King. I heard that Stephen King like I don't know they had words or something they didn't like each other. <laughs> There's five hours left, so it is midnight tonight. By the way, five hours for Eastern. Yeah, my guess is it's mm, no. I think it's in every time zone. I think they. I think this is all just some sort of scam. Yeah, I think, think King um, hated it because it was so good. Hey, Beavis, long time no see. Beavis is here. Yep, and he guessed The Shining, or he cheated, and then. Howdy, Beavis. Uh, I thought interesting that Cujo was number five. Shawshank Redemption was number six on the list. So, Stand by Me number seven. It number nine. It really Gosh. Firestarter was 12, Pet Cemetery 15, 16, Children of the Corn. The Running Man made 17. I did not know that was a Stephen King. Oh, yeah. by, well, no, no, Stand By Me. What was the movie with the kids and the and the, and they, they found the dead body? That was Stand that was by, me. by Me. Yeah, that that that's the one I was thinking of. Um, what did I say? This did nobody I... knows what you said. No. Um, I, 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 that's the one I was thinking of. What did that rate in the list? What? Stand by me? Yeah. Uh, I would have thought that one would have been seven. Uh, I, I I would have thought that one would have been higher on the list. My, I thought that was an excellent movie, by the way. Hmm. Uh, let's see if there's any other interesting ones here. But Shawshank was one of my more favorite ones as well. Shining, I um, liked it a whole lot, though. My, I mean, I don't know. depends on the time of year. Yeah, I, I like The Green Mile, too. That was a really good adaptation, I thought. And the movie did extremely well, yeah. I didn't know that 11-22-63 was a Stephen King thing. <clears throat> That's pretty interesting. Yeah, 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 it is. So, my uh, friend has the book. My friend has the book. Yeah, Hulu redid it with uh, James Franco. Really? Uh, huh. It was interesting. Interesting show. Um, 
Eh, nothing else really interesting or you know, wow, kind of. Oh, maximum overdrive was it forty eight? Yeah. Come on, that was a way better movie than that. Maximum overdrive was awesome. All right, enough of that. Um, I thought this was really interesting. So this is a, a Amplify Wi-Fi router. Runs about 150 bucks, so pretty expensive for a Wi-Fi router, but it's in the same price range as uh, OnHub. So uh, what's interesting about this, though, is it comes with two range extenders. And the idea is... Uh, you set this in the middle of your house and you put the range extenders out and uh, it's supposed to make it easy to cover your whole house. But I, I thought it was really interesting that it came with range extenders and then uh, they did a lot on the interface to make it really simple to connect and have the range extenders set up and see their connection strength and all that. So I, I thought it's a, a really interesting route to take. Um, including range extenders with the Wi-Fi router set up and the interface and all that. No, not cool. It's cool. Kind of. Maybe. Everyone's dead. Or am I the only one that can't hear everybody else? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Michael's the only one that's muted. Um, oh yeah, I was muted. Sorry, the range extenders. You're talking about. Well, oh, please don't apologize. <laughs> yeah, no, um, don't apologize for being muted, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I thought it was a, a cool thing, and Eric can hear me. Thanks, Eric. A little bit of delay there. Um, so. Uh, I thought uh, this was interesting. Someone did come up with a mini NES console that does take mini NES cartridges. So, oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> look how cute the cartridges are. Oh, really? But they did, the, they did the push down. They didn't do the top loading. They should have done a top loading. Design. No way. That's classic Nintendo. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I was just asking to be blown into that cartridge and asking to break it. Um, it's got USB connections, which is really nice. Um, so, oh, let's, so what, what's, the, what's the cartridges made out of? Uh, uh, they're not. Probably money. I mean, they, they, they never made shrunken games, real shrunken games. So what did? Hmm. I don't it? know. Maybe you can watch the video and he'll tell you. Yeah, it looks like he's telling. And while Michael does that, everyone else can check out this horrific torture for uh, when parents go to hell. It's a Lego covered treadmill. You just continuously walk on Legos. It's terrible. I bet Beavis is going to buy that. <laughs> All it is is just a, a treadmill that someone's dumping Legos on. They should automate it. Um. Did anyone else know that uh, the Nazis had an Olympic village and like there was actually like an Olympics with Nazis? Oh, he uses some like NFC thing. I, the, the cartridges are uh, largely cosmetic. They're just 3D printed. And uh, he, I think, just uses uh, an NFC to... to, to um, uh, to ID it to, um, you know, automatically launch the associated uh, game, by the way. I think that's how he's doing that. And uh, he's clearly using Emulation Station and RetroPie and stuff. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's cool. I did not know about Hitler's Olympic Games, Beavis. And Riverdust knew about it as well. I had heard of it as well. 
I thought it was pretty interesting. It, it, the article said that even people in Berlin didn't know about those structures being there. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, other interesting news. Uh, apparently, Sandy Hook is being reopened after four years. Why did they close down for four years? Uh, security upgrades? I don't know. Morning? I, I don't know. Don't they, they tore down the whole school and built an entirely brand new 86,000 square foot school. Uh, you know, we've been holding off these renovations so long that the massacre just seemed like the best time to do it. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's like this is the planets aligned, and we were like, you know, it's time to revamp. <laughs> Terrible. Um, I thought this uh, data set was interesting. So now that there's actually legal weed available for purchase, uh, we're getting some data back on who's actually out there buying it. And Ooh, do we have like 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 congressmen and senators and stuff in there? Uh, no, oh no, it's got to be anonymous. Data. Data. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's based on things. Uh, oh, so that uh, twice as many men uh, buy than women. Okay. Um, only one uh, percent spend five hundred plus dollars on weed. Okay, the prime age group is 25 to 29 uh, year old, and then it starts dropping off dramatically after uh, 30 years um, to an eventual virtually non-existent consumption rate when you're 99 years old. But um, <laughs> apparently there's a good uh, healthy 2.5% uh, of people, uh, 65 to 69. Um, I thought that was interesting. But then it drops to the 70 to 74 people that were only 08 I like that most people spend twenty five to fifty dollars and then so you know, the next most is like ten to twenty five dollars. I like the idea I, I, I like that because I think it's funny because I know that they're in the shop more than once a day. Yeah, that's what I was about to <laughs> you know, say. they're not just, just <laughs> they they do have some uh some some more statistics below where it's like uh how many days between purchases. Oh, so this one was saying a median of $33 spent over every 20 days or so for both men and women. Surprisingly, fairly equal. Hmm. Uh, it looks like as you get older, you spend more money per trip. <laughs> well, uh, be careful interpreting that. You tend to have a higher income. <laughs> Well, that or you're just like, I do not want to be coming here every day. <laughs> but look, he's coming there. They're coming there every They're They're coming there less often. So, yeah, they're spending more. They're buying in bulk. They're That's planning. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're coming there and they're like, I don't want to come here again for quite some time. But it's still, it's pretty interesting that they would do that. <laughs> 80 plus, they don't even expect them to average a year. Check out the uh, product choice, too, for the different age segments. I thought that was kind of interesting as well. But um, uh, so it's interesting to have uh, the, the, the data. I hope that they um, crunch this and, you know, they can. Uh... I found it really interesting that with it being legal that flour is still the highest. But it also says... Um... Even compared to pre-rolled stuff. Those in their 50s buying flour at the highest rate. I was actually just looking at that. Yeah, um, That's because they lived at a time when that's all they really cared. Mm. Rover, interesting. So you're allergic. Uh, Rover uh, says he's allergic. Um, oh, no. That's... Uh, uh, um, well, it's not for, for certainly uh, uh, for everyone out there, um, and certainly um, it's only legal in a couple of states in this country, um, and I don't know where. Well, actually, um, the world. 
Um, just to throw this out there, because it's hearsay at this point, but um, I have a friend who works in the wine industry. He does the back and forth between the grocery stores and the vineyards and things. And he says they are scrambling like mad, preparing for North Carolina and Virginia as his territory. And they're scrambling, trying to prepare uh, for the legalization of it and figuring out how that they can store it and sell it um, to make up for lost profits that they anticipate in the wine. Hmm. That's weird. Um, I don't than, know why, maybe why it think. impacts wine sales, though. Um, well, I'll think about it. But it may be sooner than you think, apparently, because they're really concerned about getting this done quickly. That's what he said. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Did not know that. Let's see. <laughs> well, the first com uh, comment on that article of the two is by Seattle Conservative. Um, he says, uh, the recreational users are now raising kids of their own who will grow up with the modeled behavior of their stoner parents because of this in 20 years the average age will have dropped and increase in users will be reflected in performance of u.s businesses why do you think they call it dope and seattle is like very liberal about the marijuana rules there obviously not this conservative yeah not that one Hmm. Oh, they confirmed a Zika outbreak in Florida. I didn't know that. Yep, Miami. In a specific neighborhood, no doubt. No less. Um, awesome. Um, Psycho outbreak. Apparently, in a newborn movie, not... Uh, not that. I read that. Uh, why, I'm just saying, awesome. Thanks for the Zika break, and you just move on with something about a porn movie. Who cares? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know you were talking about it. Yeah, what, what about I it? I read. I well, I was you know what the public. I, someone linked me to something the other day. I guess it was during a show that mosquitoes kill more people than people and everything else, or something. They did. Hmm. That wasn't me. I don't know. It was news to me too, but I just knew I'd be the one because I I'm guess a, malaria. I am stuff. a magnet, dude. <laughs> I am a magnet. I was out at this outdoor event um, earlier in the summer, and um, we were invited out by, in fact, a friend from the wine industry. And we were out in the in this little play yard thing uh, where the kids were doing thing and had a fire dancer and stuff. And we were there for like three hours. And I'm gonna tell you, like right before we left, uh, one of them was like, "God, I just." Bit my mosquito, watch out, y'all. And I was attacked. I, they were swarming all over me the whole night. I was like literally dancing and smacking myself the whole time. <laughs> no uh, one got bit by a mosquito but me in like three hours. Mm, so dead. Well, um, oh, but yeah, psychos that whole mess up. Mosquitoes tend to, tend to favor certain <laughs> folks versus others. I'm not really clear why uh, that is. But listen, uh, you, you know that um, digging for gold, you know that digging for gold, uh, you know, um, analog or the uh, phrase that's used to refer to while well, picking your nose. Um, that that actually though, there may be some 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 truth. What's there. referred to picking your nose? What? Well, well, you know, digging for gold or whatever. Sometimes that's used to to talk about. Um, but 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 it call may, me a miner. It may be actually Im important. There may be some good stuff in there. Check out this article. Um, it okay. looks like there's um, life saving antibiotic properties to um, the bacteria that's um, battling in uh, in your boogers. Well, it's also like micro vaccination because your nose hairs capture all the bad stuff before it gets in. Hmm. It tries to capture bad stuff before it gets. Uh, out. Unless you get old and you have to trim it so much for, you know, hygiene or whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't read the whole article yet, but uh, but uh, anyway, I just thought that was a lighthearted one for uh, for Friday. So. Sure. I Here do. is why you take flash flood signs seriously, because they are dangerous. Oh heck yeah. Like that uh, video has like huge boulders being pushed down the river. 
And it's crazy. It starts off as like this little itty bitty creek. But you can definitely tell that it's a fairly frequent flash flood place. Oh, I um, I meant to tell you about um, that. That's you know what? I'm sorry to to interrupt. That was important um, public okay. safety announcement. <laughs> um, anybody, flash floods don't take them. Uh, don't don't uh, uh, don't. Uh, Take the warnings. Uh, take the warning seriously. I guess is what I want to say. And uh, the article that I wanted to discuss was um, something that's very near and dear to you, Brantley. And I think, but well, I don't know. Do you guys both have the same video card? Is it you and John that has, or Nick that has the same video card? No, I don't even know what video card I have. I just know it's fanless. So it's just yours that that that, that this may apply to, but um. It looks like you could be getting uh, $30. Quiet PC. Sweet. So um, there was a class action lawsuit revolving the uh, NVIDIA's GTX 970. Now, that's their previous generation uh, product. Um, but basically, it comes with 4 gigs of memory. Uh, but because of a quirk in the way they... Um, they scale down the architecture from the 980. It, um, if you accessed uh, anything above three and a half gigs, the memory performance would slow down dramatically um, due to an issue where it had to copy something from one memory controller to another memory controller. Anyway, I don't, I don't understand so much the technical details of it, but uh, it definitely came into play. It was reproducible in benchmarks, and clearly something was going on. And it was fine up till 3.5 gigahertz. 3.5 gigabytes rather and uh failed on the last uh half gig mm -hmm. um and apply they, to the 962 no it doesn't apply to the 960 nor does it apply to the 980 this was solely the 970 that it applied to and um you know and it didn't you know games that took advantage at the time of, of memory beyond 3.5 gigahertz weren't that great um and uh but that the thing is they said that the product was misadvertised and they had something to that and that's i guess why they lost the suit so um you know if they had advertised it on the box as having three and a half gigs of memory you know or some sort of caveat uh but they didn't and they didn't change the product marketing ever as far as i know with it and that's why they probably lost the suit um but uh where, where are you seeing that i'm getting thirty dollars back um, card, uh, the, the brief thing here, I said, it says card owners get $30 back, but let's see, let me, thought, let me, uh, yeah, NVIDIA says it will pay each buyer the graphics card $30 and will pay an additional $1.3 in attorney's fees. Okay, so you get $30 and, uh, the attorneys get $1.3 <laughs> Hmm. Uh, okay, no, there would be no. They they indicated there's no cap on the total amount it would pay consumers, meaning anybody can, um, uh, with a receipt for GTX 970, can probably cash in on this. Um, probably including people who have yet to purchase it. I mean, there's some people who still like those cards. They're very cheap price for good performance. Mm -hmm. Despite them being a I thought it was interesting that Nvidia graphic cards cost approximately 350, and they anticipated. $30 payout was calculated to represent a portion of the cost of the storage and performance capabilities the consumer thought they were obtaining in the purchase of the product according to the proposed settlement. So that means that, A, they think that card was 350 for whoever bought it. So if you bought it after it was 350 then you got a better deal. Well, I, I, that's true, uh, since they based it on that price. Uh, but which still, makes, like, but, 0.5 gigs of memory is $30 out of 350 Uh, and There's, uh, like they said, there's more than just to consider than the actual storage capacity of the memory. It's the, uh, it's the performance uh, impact, potentially, of that as well. Um, I... Mm, Uh, yeah, I, I get, the, my only guess is, yeah, right. It seems high to you, right? That's the that's what you're saying, right? That's a little high. No, for, it seems low. They should it seems low. Yeah, it should be like a hundred dollars. Okay, I mean, I just recently purchased. Uh, let's see, 
32 gigs of memory. Um, well, that's not video card memory. That's true. I, I Yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be hard to make a point of comparison. Yeah, you're not. Anyway, here's a baby uh, snake failing to attack a finger, and it's super cute. So enjoy it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, too. That was one of their more popular cards, um, meaning that might have a big um, impact. If you own stock in NVIDIA, that could, could impact them. And especially since they 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 don't even choose to evaluate it at all in saying it's as broadly applicable, uh, I'd, I'd keep an eye on that, actually. Hmm. Um, we mentioned, or I talked about this yesterday with the crew, but... Uh, MTV A apparently owns VH1. Didn't know that. B they're renaming VH1 Classic to uh, MTV Classic, and they're going to serve up a uh, bunch of stuff from 1990s and 2000s for MTV. Things like Beavis and Butthead, Daria, Total Request Live, Road Rules, The Real World. Jackass, oh, punk, yeah, but what happened to me again? Well, we we mentioned that that uh, uh, the other side of that though is that they're going to it's going to debut on August first, and the first hour and first show is going to be their first hour of programming from 1981. So the first hour of MTV ever broadcast is going to be the first hour broadcast on MTV classic. Um, and all that, I thought it was an interesting point that imagine having access to all of MTV's collective media, like so many music videos, so much stuff. Like I would never get anything done if I just had unfettered access to that. Like, I don't see why MTV doesn't have a streaming service set up where they just stream music videos. That It seems like that would be a YouTube killer. Like, I'm almost positive, like, a lot of percentage of YouTube searches are just for music videos. So if MTV had a music video streaming service, I would pay for that. Would you all not pay for that? Imagine having digital access to all of MTV's videos. Not only that, but all of MTV and VH1's music videos. Sounds like a good idea to me. That seems like a perfect streaming service. And that they're missing out tons. Because even like, just like what Nick said, that this MTV classic doesn't bring back what we miss about MTV. They're not filling the hole that is MTV right now, which is there's no music videos anymore. But they're, them having a streaming service would be incredible. Beavis is pointing out that MTV doesn't own the videos and would have to pay each time they stream it. Yeah, just like any music streaming service. Um, so... Okay. Um, listen, I had two great little links here. Um, robots love them uh, or hate them, uh, but building a house in two days with a thousand bricks an hour, um, that seems pretty darn impressive. Um, I think, is there a video on that link? I hope so. Yeah, there's a video. This is... Uh, it's kind of wild to, uh, oh God, yeah, it's, it, it's wild to watch it now. Pretty amazing, but that's, uh, that's cute. Um, that's almost a cool video of the day, actually, um, even though it's not uh, positioned as such. Um, the other thing is I want your guys' opinion on what, um, what the hell you think um, Disney's trying to do with this creepy-ass patent. Um, they're... Uh, they're trying to swing tracking people by their shoes or something like this. I don't know. That's a good idea. Hmm. Um, 
Um, I, I, I don't know. Why is that creepy want... that they're tracking your shoes? Uh, Do you prefer them track your faces? <laughs> I'd prefer they not track me at all, frankly. But uh... Well, I mean, they have to know how to make the experience better for everyone. If they find out that everybody is going to a certain spot at a certain time of day, they need to spread that kind of stuff out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It used to be that companies had to um, uh, had to uh, ask us for our personal data. Okay. And that completely apparently <laughs> way. You, a um, picture of your shoes is personal data that you want a company to ask you for. If it's and, in plain sight, you don't have a right to privacy. Yeah, and you're yeah you're on their uh, territory. You're oh, on their yeah, property. I'm not trying to make their jobs well, easier. Their I don't want. I choose not to provide them with the data. That well, then you choose not to go. Don't worry about. Yeah. It. Just yeah, just don't go. But you're not like you're like talking. I'm not paying to be surveilled. I mean, uh, the, yeah, I won't go. I'm not going to pay the ticket you price. You are, to, Michael. To, That's to, what I'm talking about. You don't understand the business that you're talking about, so you you don't you're not making any sense. I look, you're paying to be surveilled. You are paying to go there and have an enjoyable experience. The only way you're going to have an enjoyable experience is if someone has gone through the due diligence of traffic monitoring. And shaping and everything, like all the stoplights. Right way to do it without my shoes. All the stoplights are have to be managed to make traffic flow nice. Uh, well, I'm sorry. They need to hire more people, create more jobs instead of replacing jobs with freaking robots. Hire people to track your shoes. Yes, hire people to track your shoes. Hire That's people to track ridiculous. your shoes. Absolutely. What's the difference in using technology to monitor the shoes and having a person monitor the shoes? Yeah. It's well, at least monitor. it would be employing somebody. You're right. There's no difference, but at least it would be employing somebody. At least there would be some positive aspect of it, I think. Um, and it's, but you're possible. not losing anything. You're only gaining from this. Uh, that's what they want you. Because that's your experience. You've drank the Kool-Aid. You've drank the, drunk the Kool-Aid. They're not. Well, Michael, you're, you're, you're not that a company ever like claims is good for the consumer. Your interests. Actually, good for them. Michael. What are you? You're. It's ridiculous, though. That oh, they can't have a picture of my shoes to tell where I'm at. Uh, fine. And it's not like it's live tracking you. It's not like they put a chip in you, which that would make more sense, honestly. They just put freaking chips in all the tickets and make you walk around with your ticket. No, I mean but, but robots are okay, Beavis, but I, I, I don't like I, I, I don't like the how they are replacing our jobs as rapidly as they are. I don't think our economy is quite set to have that type of transition yet. We're just we're not even recovered from our previous issues and um now we're gonna start taking away huge swaths of the, the, the job market uh at a time with uh, robots. I mean I, I know it's inevitable, um but I I, I, I he does say robots, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, anyway i, I look <laughs> michael did you know you're saying robots Is it, how do you say it robots bot <laughs> Ro robots not bot but Ro robots robot <laughs> robots <laughs> anyway uh, here is fuel for your nightmares. Uh, bats can swim. Oh. Oh, that is so adorable. That is so cute, actually. That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't look scary at all. That doesn't look scary at all. Um I thought this was a pretty awesome uh, Guinness World Record. The world's longest whip crack in history, uh, 238 feet and three inches long. It's actually pretty cool to watch them whip. The uh, site of the world's worst nuclear disaster could be getting solar power soon. <coughs> is, that, is that irony? I, I feel like that's irony. Oh, who who out there does have an Amazon Echo? 
Because if you do, ask them this question as well. Uh, ask them what the Amazon quarterly earnings report was. <laughs> Apparently, the Echo doesn't want to tell you. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't want to tell you they made $857 million last quarter <laughs> compared to last year where they earned $92 million. Why would they want to keep that a secret? Well, they don't want your $100 or $200 toy telling you how much they made. Oh, zero divided by zero is, well, anything divided by zero is not a number. So um, uh, I'm sure she probably has a has a problem with it. Uh, unless, But I would have thought that they would have taken that into account because that would come up. Or does it just happen for zero by zero? Or, I mean, theoretically, if it was based upon a computation problem, it would be any number divided by zero. Let's see what Google says. Okay, I'm doing the test. Okay, Google. Can you hear me? Okay, Google. No. I'll ask Cortana. What is zero divided by zero? What's zero divided by zero? Oh, I have to push a button. What's zero divided by zero? Yeah, it uh, doesn't give me an answer. It just uh, puts What's it zero in Google. Zero. Just puts it in Google, but um, uh, okay. So this is what Siri said. Imagine. Oh, it went away. Oh, I gotta see that. Hang on. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> what is zero divided by zero? What is zero divided by zero? Forty-two. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. Oscar is sad that there are no cookies, and you are sad that you have no friends. Did you hear that? Yeah. Wow. That that. Is it just talking to you in general? Because I know you love cookies. Or is this about? I don't don't know if that is the generic response for everyone, or if that just happens to be my own personal response. I asked Cortana, and Cortana brought up a YouTube video of asking Siri zero divided by zero. That's all it brought up. Just a video. So everyone else can watch that. Say, mosquitoes kill more humans than murderers do. (laughs) Mostly due to malaria. SmithsonianMag.com, eh? I don't know, dude, but there's a lot of hits on it. Um, Mosquito time. Have you all ever heard of a defragmenting program called VOPT? A what? No. Defragging program called VOPT? V-O-P-T? No. It's apparently gone uh, freeware now, and it also includes things like cleanup, uh, checking for disk errors, uh, drive failure prediction using smart, drive performance, uh, free space overwrite, networking tools for some reason, and system tools. Mm. Kind of interesting to all be included in that little app. Uh, uh, Yeah, it's got a lot of weird features for a defragment tool. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, some of the features are complimentary, I would say, certainly. You know, I, 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 I kind of like having some of that together, but some of it seems just like the networking tool. All relates tools. to data. Well, the networking tool, I mean, I guess. Maybe not but... the networking tool. <clears throat> <laughs> um, but, uh, and then the, the just the generic system tools, that's kind of a little weird, too. Um, but, but, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I might take take a look at that. It's uh, it uh, it shows you metadata. That's interesting. 
a simple, somewhat simple interface, but uh, mm. I like simple sometimes. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for that. Yeah, okay. I thought it was interesting. Um, this was pretty cool too. Uh, how to make a neon sign. Uh, this guy is actually just making a cool neon sign. Hey, Glenn, this one's for you, buddy. Impress all your friends down under with the phosphorescent glowing boomerang. That's pretty Ooh. sweet. Pretty sweet. Uh, here's another neon sign maker. It's pretty interesting to watch neon signs be made. Um, I've got some gr good articles from... Um, the good folks at Anantech. Um, there, if you want to dig deep, as they do, uh, into CPU architectures, this is uh, IBM's Power 8, uh, part one of their um, breakdown of that. Uh, I won't even try to, uh, to go Jamming into the details of that. Thank you, Phoenix. I'm John Thang. Um, and they also have what appears to be a very nice article um, of, a very, of a CPU that I'm very fond of and was a big game changer, in my opinion, in the landscape of things for um, efficiency and, and performance. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's the 10-year uh, anniversary of the Core 2 uh, Duo and uh, its associated Conroe architecture. Um, um, you didn't know that? You weren't invited to the party? Did you even know there's a party? Um, but that's a, that's a great, uh, that's a, that's a great, uh, in-depth, uh, as usual, uh, article from them. Hmm. Who, what, now, what party? Uh, oh, you're talking about, <laughs> oh, the, them having an actual party? No, uh, they're just talking, you know, they, they, they've got some good stuff in there. I, I'd say take a look at it. And um, and this article as well was really interesting uh, to me. It, well, I mean, not really interesting. It just reaffirmed sort of what I my experience. I was buying <laughs> RAM recently, and uh, it talks about the the, the decline in, 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 in RAM prices. Um, and it's got uh, one of my uh, the picture at the top there, and that link is. Uh, G skill, and uh, I'm a big fan of G skills memory. In fact, I, I bought some G skill. Uh, memory uh added it to mine um recently and uh, uh the ddr4 price decline has um has basically looks like it's kind of uh hit uh i hope it'll go down further but uh it's it's quite dro a drop quite dramatically since the turn of the uh year there's a video uh, courtesy of Johnny she found this one uh, oh catching a human in pokemon go Oh, really cool! Really quick, uh, though. Though um, the 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 DDR4 prices are cheaper than DDR3 now. Um, I think that's an important takeaway too from the article. Um, so um, yeah, now might be a good time to buy. Um, now, what were you saying, Pokemon Go? What can happen with a human? Uh, augmented reality gone wrong in that video. Pokemon Go capturing a real human. It's pretty interesting, especially if you play the game. Mm. Ooh. All right. Facebook. <laughs> I only got one more link, and I'd already given you some fuel for your nightmares. This will, this will be the fuel for your nightmares for the rest of your life. Uh, this is Snooky's music video. Oh. oh, why did you post that in our chat? <laughs> I was like, what is this? And I clicked on it. And I was like, <laughs> you watched it. 
Why did you? Why? In Brad? this one, I. It's, it's in trap. This, <laughs> in this one, I linked uh, to the time where I thought it was the the funniest part of the whole music video. She has it, her song is called "Young Mommy," and she goes out of her way to mention stretch marks and breastfeeding. I just thought it was super funny. Mm. What, what I'm wondering is, what were you doing that you were just sitting down watching whoever this is' this video? <laughs> Snooky's video? <clears throat> oh, yes, oh, what were you I doing? I mean, Michael, sure, I would get that. But you? Really? G Skill? That's a horrible Glenn, video I... you made us watch earlier. Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> Glenn brings up an issue. Uh, he's saying he, he's found G Skill to be unreliable. Um, I've not had that be the case. Now, I've had the past two systems i've had of uh, i believe it's unreliable too skill memory and i haven't I had, had any issues with bad ones and it was the only thing i ever bought actually personally. uh well i'm a fan of g skill i um, like crucial buyer beware though um uh, I, think I just had it spice world buyer beware um Do they make ram yeah crucial we all have our favorite ram i'm not promoting I'm not well, saying that they don't the make them. Maybe they are just best. I just chose them primarily because of that issue with the uh, breastfeed, uh, the jack or the row hammer attacks um, for ram row hammering. But uh, it's unlikely. I think that, that that type of that that type of attack would be anywhere commonplace. So it, it might be an irrelevant point. And uh, if that's the case, I remember who had this recommendation. Might be better. Um, I'm sorry, Glenn, you feel strongly about that, and I didn't mean to rub you the wrong way. Um, uh, and Phoenix, um, what, um, what's your recommendation? And, and, and <laughs> His recommendation people, is that you need to... There's a lot of people in the chat, so we only have two people's opinion here of memory, and I'd like to hear a couple of others. Uh, futures, uh, what do you guys use um, uh, in your shops? I like to use Corsair. Uh, yeah, don't ask the computer store owner we have right here. We <laughs> don't include him. I mean, um, well, you know, I like to maintain interactivity with our with our audience out there. So um, that's good to know. Um, but uh, yeah, share your stories of what you use and why you feel it's uh, it's good, whether it be price, whether it be reliability, whether it be um, you know anything else. Um, Re reliability was the reason that I switched to using Corsair a long time ago. Um, Failure rates are way lower than other brands I've tried. I have not used G, uh, G Skill. Um, I have had good luck with Crucial, um, but reliability was the reason I switched. It, there used to be a, you know, a little bit of a price premium, but it's really not that much more expensive than than other brands nowadays. No, yeah, they're 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 not that bad. Um, so well, um, that's awesome, Beavis. There's another game with Gladys singing the end of portal one and two they have the robot singing it's pretty awesome it's worth oh thinking. lego dimensions is that a new lego movie or something or um, it's a game oh it's a game uh interesting um have some listen michael you'll figure it out oh wait don't don't mm. have kids mm. um so um I'm, yeah, I've been... i like kingston sticks too Eric. Oh yeah, God, Kingston. I uh, let's just Kingston. Very. Uh, I, I thought the they were very reliable game. Kingstons in the past. In the day. Um, I've been trying to follow M2 SSDs. I still think they're a little bit too expensive uh, for the larger varieties to purchase, but um, they're coming a long way, especially in capacity. And now um. Seagate, um, they apparently have uh, an enterprise line of SSDs known as the Nitro, and they're going to offer a two terabyte capacity of that. Um, so that's something to look at now. And these enterprise drives, of course, um, uh, you know, usually are the ones with the larger capacities and usually get the enterprise price to go along with it. So don't expect um, that to be uh, a consumer oriented product. But again, I'm keeping my eye on these things. It's not um, something that I'm probably going to purchase in the near future, but uh, in the very near future. But, um, you know, hopefully as soon as they come down a little bit in price, uh, we can all see a nice big boost to our uh, this performance uh, yet again above um, it might might even be as much above um, hard drives as, as SSDs were originally over the mechanical ones. 
or much above uh, SSDs as, as, as hard drives were above. Uh, as SSDs were above the mechanical hard drives. You know what I'm saying. Um, yes. King Max cheap, but fair. Glenn, King Max. Never heard of King Max. I don't know about that. I don't either. I've not used any King Max. But we have reached our hour for the day. Yay! Does anybody have anything else they want to wrap up the week with? I do. Uh, Beavis I got do. something for me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's this about? What's this? Oh, is that the Gladys song? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, I appreciate that. I'll have to take a look. I am a fan of that. So. Portal is a great game, too, by the way. If you have not played Portal 1 and 2, highly recommend playing both of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Portal 1 is... It's free. They used to be free. Uh, I don't know if it still is, but if not, it's definitely worth whatever couple yeah, bucks you'll Portal. spend on it. Yeah. It's like how, how have I missed this? I, I thought there was a there was a show called Portal. No, no, this is different. Um, definitely um, check it, is, it out. It so, is a, a um, super Nick. awesome game. I, you probably would like it. It's it's kind of like a a mix between uh, Half Life and. It's not a shooter though. Yeah, it's, there's no killing in it at all. It's a puzzle game. So it's like it's Half Life with more puzzles. And like you get a gun that creates a portal here, and then you can create a portal there, and you can travel through that portal. Yeah, so it's a it's a little bit of a it takes a little while to get used to the concept and the types of puzzles, uh, yeah. um, and spatial orientation and stuff like that that you have to do. Yes, no relation to the G four portal show. Yeah, a lot of physics involved in the game too. Um, that's it, it is a really good, really really good game. Um, yeah, it's their uh, their their sense of humor fun. is awesome. The sense of humor is what you will laugh during this game. I mean, yeah. the, the, the the there's I guess some drama in it too, but but it's 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 so weird how yeah. The second like the first one, the first one if you play it is really quick. Like you'll like fly through it almost if you get the hang of it. The second one is much 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 longer. So it's much nicer, and they got a lot more storyline on the second one. But the second one's funny. It just starts off like insulting you. It's like, uh, can you talk? And you you press space to jump, and then he's like, okay, well you jumped, so at least you can understand me. That's good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <clears throat> the the AI is a choice. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, um, there's a good uh, link uh, Beavis posted about uh, that game. So yeah, if if you guys have it out there, check it out. Um, be a good thing to pass uh, the weekend with if you have nothing better. Uh, I'm gonna do some retro gaming. Um, I and you're gonna figure out why you can't install RAM. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, what? what Michael more? got a new RAM today and doesn't know how to install it. Oh yeah, you so know you just, have to put it in while the computer's on, right? He just took his old RAM out and put the new RAM in and gave up. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I when I put them both in, I I needed to do some BIOS tweaking and some and stuff, but oh, uh, I just didn't have time to do it today. Well, just for the record, do not install your RAM. When the computer is on. <laughs> yeah, well, when I first tried to do that, when I first tried to do that, the machine immediately locked up, and I was uh, wasn't expecting that um, to be such a dramatically quick um, thing. But uh, yeah, it immediately locked up when I ripped out the memory channel. Um, you do need to update your drivers before you you add more RAM. Mm -hmm. Update your RAM drivers. Yes, and uh, when I download the RAM, what folder do I put it in? Is it is it, it is it System matter. 32 or SysWow 64 maybe? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just as long as it's on my hard drive somewhere. Yep. Excellent. So, okay. Um, all right. Take us Thank out, Proctor. For watching. We'll be back right. on Monday morning at eight. We are here to provide support for our products and services, but we'll otherwise random. Uh, yeah, IT for president. I know. I didn't get to say that. Michael runs his mouth too much. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, IT for president. Um, Have a good weekend, everybody. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.